I think a typical day on set would involve, for me anyway, kind of rehearsing in the morning. So it's mainly working with the assistant director, um, who's very key in all this. I think assistant directors are very, very underrated people. Um, they're really essential in terms of, you know, organizing the timetable, um, the, the shot lists, um, but also the blocking as well. So working with, 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 with the director of photography and, this, and the assistant director, and then you bring the actors in, and you, you kind of rehearse with them, then they go back in their little boxes and do whatever they have to do. Um, and then, you know, you, 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 you shoot basically and um, you just hope for the best. I mean, in terms of start, it's really hard to pin it down. I think there's something maybe in 10 years you can look back and see that something runs through it. But the danger with that is as soon as you know you have a star, it, it goes wrong. I've seen it in other directors where they read their own press too much and um, it's no longer in, in intuitive that that process and I think um, having a style in a sense involves not not being conscious of it uh, for what for, for, for want of a better word you you are you are kind of postmodern because there's so much before you but you, you just adapt what you like the most and somehow mix it in a way that can can be yours but um sometimes it's not it sounds quite cynical to talk about it like, like that but sometimes it's quite natural and this I think if you're if you're a fan of cinema it's just um a very um, kind of joyful process of doing that. You just get a lot of fun out of it. Um, but I, I guess style. I mean, I don't like fast things. That's just me. I don't like. I like cuts to to last a certain amount of time. I'm not talking about slow cinema, but um, I always like to leave things just that little bit longer. And um, just you know, I like to go in second gear, not <laughs> not fifth. In terms of working with actors, it, it always depends on the actor. They're, they're so different in how they work and their, their needs. So um, some actors, <clears throat> when they rehearse, they don't want to talk about cameras or blocking or movement, anything like that. They, they just want to work with words and emotions and motivation and work outwards from that. And then movement kind of incorporates itself in, into it in a, in, a, in a very natural process. Other actors, the first thing they'll ask you is, what am I holding? How am I moving? That's, words can come later. Um, and it varies. You know, Some actors just get it wrong again and again and again, and you think, oh, God, we're just dying here. And then you look at it in the edit, and you cut away the fat, and you see absolute dynamite in there. And um, I was always a bit scared working with actors. Um, I always thought there's kind of some kind of secret I'm missing. Um, I think over time you realize it's just, it's all about communication and listening um, it's more about you listening to them than them listening to you and 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 just encouragement I think and I think doing this interview now it's it's not pleasant no, no offense to any of you but um, it's very nerve-wracking to have a camera there in front of you knowing that's going to go up and maybe someone's going to look at it and um, for an actor to know that's there on a the screen <coughs> in for God knows how many decades um, you've got to put an awful lot of trust into a, a director for that. And I think as a director, it's quite hard, hard to appreciate that, that fear. I think as a director, sometimes you're very, you have very fixed ideas about w what you want. Um, but quite often actors will, will give you something that you never thought of. And I think it's just giving them space to do that. And then you can go back to the edit afterwards. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least, at, at least you have it. But yeah, I mean, for me, there's, there's no, um, it, it's, 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 a, it's a continuous process of actors and each person is different. So it, it, this, 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 you're always, on, you're always on, on your toes. But um, I think as time goes, I hope I get more confident and realize, you know, they're not this other species. They are human beings like me. <laughs> I think mean, one of the hardest scenes to shoot so far in the films I've done has been the lake scene in Kotlin Varga, um, both in terms of practicalities and also in terms of the idea of that scene. So I think the crew were quite resistant to it. And I think when you're doing a kind of semi-professional, semi-amateur film, the crew have a lot more mouth than they would on a, on a film which is you know, funded and so on. They, they'll, they'll tell you exactly what they think. And um, we were on three boats. There was Hilda and the other actors, Tibor and Melinda, and Mark, of course, who was shooting it, and the other crew members with the sound and so on. And I was on another boat, mainly trying to get the tourists away because we couldn't close the lake down. Um, and it was terrible. The, the crew just kept saying how boring this is. And of course, actors get incredibly 
it's quite off-putting for them and Hilda was saying this is boring this is terrible and I said no it's not just keep going ignore them and and then the rain came down and we wanted it to be quite a rainy shoot and um, there wasn't rain at all throughout and suddenly though on this lake it's supposed to be a sunny day and it poured down the rain and, and it was it's quite stressful um, we looked at it afterwards and it was, it was just beautiful and um, it doesn't seem like a bad memory and actually it, it's it's something it's that's the weird thing. I think when you look back on these things, it's 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 a pain at the time, but um, I always have quite fond memories. I think the strange thing with Cotton Varga is how easy it became afterwards, and um, it took two years to fund Barbarian. <clears throat> it, we got into the process straight after Varga opened in Berlin. And for me, two years is a walk in the park. It's so easy. I know one director complained recently because it took him six months to find his film. So I think it depends on, on your expectations, but for someone, it took me, you know, five years to make Varga, and that was after just having spent years of having my scripts, not even rejected, just, you just don't get an answer. So two years was just great. Um, it was very, very easy. We had rejections, we went through the usual process, but we actually had letters that rejected us, which for me was great um, so it was good I mean it won't always be this way it is tough getting funding and we, we had a good ride and I don't feel guilty about it because I, I think after how many years between 1992 and <clears throat> 2009 of just being in the wilderness I kind of felt well I, I don't mind having an easy ride uh, but it's weird I mean with Varga there was the pressure of, of losing my money which which, which I did um, and actually, it's the same feeling of terror when you're in danger of losing someone else's money. It's, it's exactly the same fear. I thought, OK, it's not my money this time, but it is. The pressure is on. You know, you, you just can't get it wrong. And um, so I think whatever you do, it's still, when you shoot, it, 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 it is, um, you've got to watch your blood pressure a little bit.